Welcome back to Pioneer Governors. My name is Sophia Wanuna. With us tonight is the first governor of Kiambu County, William Kabogo. Thank you again for being with us. So we're talking about, before we went on break, the question of accountability. And there were concerns about summonses issued that were not honored. Uh, yes, that was a very hot debate. And uh, it ended up in the courts of Kenya. And a decision was made uh, uh, by the courts uh, expressing the fact that uh, anyone can be invited, but as a last resort. But because there was superiority, you know, wars Contest, yeah. between uh, um, the senators and governors, you remember they went to an extent of even making a motion of um, pecking order, such that when the president is in, is in your county, what is the protocol in terms of pecking order and, and um, hierarchy? where they ended up putting uh, the governor as number five, I think. <laughs> um, took off the flag and said the flag should not be flown by mm -hmm. governors. Mm -hmm. And uh, this issue about summoning. Yes. Uh, when the court ruled that they could and they sent me summons, I went. Number one, they could not uh, uh, um, interview us because they didn't have quorum because certain very bold senators were not present. Because Kaboko required a giant um, to be to, to to sit on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, so we failed one, we failed another one. We continued going um, persistently. We made sure we got a date every other week, um, and with all the problems that came with uh, uh, the sittings that we managed to go for, mm -hmm. we managed to clear two audits. Uh, you remember this is the time they were shouting all over and saying, no, muajibike, sijuyu hamwezi kataa kuajibike. And we were simply saying, the accounting officer of a ministry is the PS. We had an equivalent of a PS, which were, uh, in, uh, uh, you know, the CEOs in, uh, in the county. Yeah. They didn't want, they just wanted the governor to sit there and answer questions. What would you say is your legacy? Uh, of course, the healthcare. Um, services in Kambu is and it cannot be compared with anywhere else. Uh, revenue collection, automation, uh, digitization of uh, hospital uh, management system, uh, cleanness of our cities, um, and actually having a fully functional and running government by 14 months. That was, to myself, miraculous. Yeah. It was an impossible, it's, it's something I did not think would happen. You know, I, I'm trying to move backwards and say, suppose I was not elected governor in 2013, and, and the one who is governor now was governor uh, in 2013 to 2017, and I asked myself, would there be systems? Would there be a functioning government? You don't would think we so? Have, I, I don't think so. You need a lot of determination. You need to be very hard at some point, make very hard decisions. Um, which will, uh, of course, not please very many people. And looking back, what do you regret? That you were the governor, you had all of this mandate, and you feel on this one... To be honest, I regret nothing that we did. If I was to be elected again... Perhaps never did, not uh, just if did. If I was to be elected again, I probably would do it just the same way. Really? You'd yes. not improve? The improvement would be playing politics so that you get elected without problems. And I don't think I would do that. I have no room to try and please anyone so that I can get elected. What do you think is the biggest problem facing the people of Kiambu even to date? We've seen the in alcohol... In terms of poverty, in terms of alcoholism, in terms of idleness. Um, very many people have gone to school. And, and also, of course, they also, with the social media now, people just want to play politics. If you open Kiambu, United States of Kiambu, you, the window, you will see the sort of people, uh, attitudes of people that we... We have. Hakietu is another problem. You know, everything is Hakietu. So what do you make of the efforts by the governor now to deal with alcoholism? Uh, no comments. What did you do, if at all, we started, to deal we, we, with... Because it still a is a problem. We created a million fund to give money for startup. By the time I left, I think we had a direct impact on five thousand young men and women startups ninety percent successful 
They're not dealing with the addiction. You're creating yes no, opportunities. This, the addiction but is not as serious as you want to put it. It is there. It is in villages. It, it is not 70% of the young men and women that are alcoholic. It is just a small fraction, you know, a fraction of them. But it's a nuisance because it affects very many people. But why is it we have this problem? One, idleness. Two, a thing like this gambling. If I was president, I would stop it. I would stop it. If a lady at the village is asked for 100 bob by a young man to go and gamble, and she doesn't give, he, she will get a threat of a knife. There is a lot that is hidden in there, in the village, that doesn't come out in public. The way to deal with alcoholism is to make sure that our young men and women are, have useful things that they do mm -hmm. to generate a revenue for themselves. Yeah. That's why we started the greenhouse movement. We started with 80 greenhouses bought by government and given to villages that were used for training to train other farmers. And as they do that, they would plant, you know, capsicum and other sort of uh, um, horticultural products. They would sell and buy a tent for another group. Mm -hmm. By the time we exited, we had over 400 greenhouses. If a greenhouse has a revenue of a million shillings a year, approximately 1.2, so 400 would be how much? The infrastructure in Kiambu County. We were the best in terms of tarmac. How so? You know, I remember uh, uh, people advertising 33 kilometers of tarmac in uh, the Chacos in uh, 90 days. We did Githungori to Kiambu town, fully tarmac. We did Kikuyu, we did Riru, we did Thika. CBD, dual carriage, it was one way, if you remember Thika, full of potholes. We have dual carriage going into Thika, dual carriage which we left halfway from hospital to um, uh, Garissa Road. We did uh, about 1,700 kilometers of bit, you know, uh, uh, Moram roads, all weather roads. Hardcore, Moram, and compacted. So today those you're roads, saying the roads in roads, Kiambu County, the entire county are good? Not not the entire county. Remember, yes, Kiambu is 2,000 kilometers square. At the rate we were going, we would have passable roads in the whole county in nine years. I also was the first governor to introduce a motion in Bunge that would help us do concession on roads, where we would advertise the Chinese would have been the beneficiaries of such a program because they have the cheapest money in the world. We wanted to be allowed, and I spoke to the head of state, that we want to start concessions so that we advertise for a certain kilometer of roads. We were thinking about 400 kilometers of, of bitumen road, uh, which we would pay with the money that we use every year. Right. You know, we, use, uh, uh, we were using about 700 million on uh, uh, roads, maybe 400 million on new, new roads and, and 300 million on maintaining old roads. So we were thinking that 400 million of new roads, we would use it as a repayment for the facility mm -hmm. that we will get with the company, hopefully a Chinese company, so that they would tarmac the roads and put road tolls. Yeah. With, and then... The other bit that doesn't come from rotals would come from the money that we um, set aside every year. Okay. That motion is sitting somewhere. Let, let's talk about inter-county relations. We've seen various counties pulling together. Uh, we to, did form the central block. Which is what I want to ask. Which was the last one, actually, after... So how, where is that now? What I'm is it you are sure able to achieve? I'm not sure how far it is now, but we had actually two meetings only. Mm -hmm. the, the inaugural meeting, and then one more, uh, I think, three months later, where we were now comparing notes. How do we deal, how do we benefit as a block? Uh, and uh, and the, the, the first few things we were supposed to deal with was coffee in terms of marketing, or uh, tea also. So which counties uh, were involved? Uh, uh, this was, I think we were seven counties. All right. Uh, the counties of Central Kenya, plus uh, Nakuru and Nyandarwa. Mm. Uh, we also um, brought in Nithi and, and, and Meru. Okay. Um, so that was the block. If, if that can happen and then they become an autonomous mm -hmm. body and be able to borrow and deal with donor uh, funds, growth will be achieved faster. Mm. Again, there was push and pull about donor money. 
You know, the first dollar money to come through directly to counties was, I think, Danida for health. Mm -hmm. Remember, the French also wanted to, but there was also yeah. push and pull by the Minister of uh, uh, Health. Mm -hmm. I don't know why the Minister of Health would want to keep money in, uh, in uh, headquarters. I don't know why the Minister of Devolution would want money in, uh, in, uh, in uh, central government. Mm. Almost all these devolved funds should go yeah. to, to, to the county. Of course, there are good things that happen, uh, like the equipment uh, uh, fund that we got. Uh, but of course, not all counties benefited, benefited from that fund because they got equipments that they are not using. You give Isiolo equipment and they don't have the facilities. Um, mm. And there is a uniform repayment of 94 million a year, which I have seen has increased to, yeah. I don't know how much, almost triple. Wow. I don't know why it would increase and there was a fixed agreement. At the very beginning. Yes, but uh, corruption again, is, yeah. uh, equipment becomes obsolete very fast. I'm told some of those things uh, uh, are not working in many counties, but in Kambu, those that didn't work immediately, I returned them. And so, I asked for more and we got more. We so, had insurance. So our governor is sitting quietly on this? We're not uh, hearing any you know, conversation around you it? You speak and people want to politic on what you're saying. Uh, our biggest problem in Kenya is petty politics. You know, you want to say, no, the government is holding on to this, no, there's siasa. Everything is siasa. Mm. If we can just pull siasa out of governance, out of development work, um, this country will be a middle-class economy in a very short while. It becomes difficult because the politics card is played on convenience and the... Like now, know. for example, why are we talking about 22? Why do we have people on radio, on TV, on weekends talking about 2022? This country is not just about politics. Mm -hmm. This country is not about elections. And that's why I always say, people must decide to become politicians or leaders. But you will find out of every 10, 0.1% is a leader. Others are politicians. We'll talk more about that towards the end of the interview. But let's go back to corruption. Um, a huge conversation around that right now at the national level, around the country. We've seen numerous scandals. For the first time, we have a governor spending a night behind bars uh, over corruption-related charges. At the county level, do you think there's a vibrant fight against corruption? Because it is going on in the counties. If you look at Kiambu, for example, how many people lost their jobs because of corrupt deals? What get you? I'll summon you and tell you, my friend, do you want to go to jail? Because we have a case against you. Alternative, mm -hmm. just resign. And I had very many who resigned with that problem. But was that fixing the problem? Like it was when, fixing it no, because... You see, like when people really, step aside and they're doing something wrong and we think that is justice, know, it's not. Stepping aside and then you go to court and all these things. Again, look at the number of cases we had in Kiambu. Cases that were really not necessary. We were spending 90 million shillings on legal fees. We try and hire our own lawyers, we lose cases because you know how these things happen. To me, what was important was to have a functional and non-corrupt government. A government that was working. And once we got rid of most of these guys, things were happening. I am surprised that most of them have found their way back. I don't know how. Officers that left during your term have come back? Yeah. What did you make of the conflict between the governor now and his deputy? I mean, we've seen Honestly, such instances. Honestly, I have run away from discussing Kiambu. I don't like to speak about Kiambu. So you'd never run again? I saw some people were talking about Kafa Kafogo that is following a, a post that you'd put That was a hashtag out. I said when I was handing over power. Yes. That I had two hashtags. One was to Jenga Kiambu to Kiwa Pamaja. That is still relevant even then, even now. The other hashtag was based on whether Mwashimiwa and Tito wanted it to become important or not. And that was the Kaba Kaboko tag, uh, you know, hashtag, which is very loud right now. But really, I want people to give him a chance. Uh, let them do what it is they're doing. You will evaluate what they do when they finish doing what they're doing. So it's not out of the question for you to run again for office uh, in this county? Let me say, for now, I am not thinking about running. Um, 
um, I have more important things to worry about. One, I have to worry about Kenya. Where we will be, where will Kenya be in the next 10 years? If I can be of help anywhere, even if it's pro bono, pro bono without pay, I would give a help in hand to make Kenya a better, a better place. Your relationship, but, uh, yeah. But uh, of course, from the grapevine, the cries of the people, what is going on in many counties, um, especially the ones that surround us here, um, a lot needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, because once you kill systems that were um, initiated by your, pre you know, your, your predecessors, um, what are you saying? And there are systems that were working. I would wish to know what sort of revenues were collected uh, end of 30th of June, because I know it cannot be anywhere near uh, uh, the 2.7 billion mark that uh, we hit uh, in two years. And that doesn't mean we were overcharging people. Mm -hmm. It means that almost 80% of what was collected went to the government till. Uh, is it happening today? I would really want to know. But as I say, this is Kambu uh, now, I don't play politics of Kambu. Let's do national politics a bit. Let's help Kenya move forward. So what are you considering? What, in, what does national politics, Like what we are engagement? doing every time you ask me to come to studio, that's national politics. So then uh, let's... let's uh, state of uh, Kenya. State of Kenya. Yes, that's, that, that is conversation, one subject that I love. That conversation, you said people should stop having around 2022. Um, and clear lines... Tell me the truth. Why would Kenyans speak about 2022 today? Unless and, they just leave for 2022. So immediately 2022 is done, we'll speak 27. So do you support when the deputy it, president? In, in what? In taking over from the president. You know, he's a candidate. He needs to prove himself by working. So far, I haven't seen anybody else, so far. You don't but think Raila Odinga will run again? I mean, I'm not sure. Well, he given does, those two he has not given indications that he okay. will run. If in but a, I had ODM saying they'll have a candidate. In a situation where there were the two of them, who would you support? I Hypothetically. Believe. You want me to lie to you or tell you the truth? To tell me the truth. I would tell, I would vote for the one that will have convinced me by then that he's a better leader. It's a very safe <laughs> answer you're giving. But this has clearly rocked the Jubilee party and the presidency. The I don't is, think it has rocked the presidency. I think the president is firm and he knows what he wants to do. It has rocked other people. And I don't even think it has Sumbuat, the deputy president. Because he's saying, let's not discuss 22. Let's work. That but is the last I heard. He's saying that, but seated... He's saying... But he's once not, attending what you're functions... Saying is what he says is not... He's preaching water and, uh, ex and yeah, drinking wine. Yeah, because if everyone around you is saying something different... Well, then when you have the likes of Mulcom and speaking, people imagine it's the deputy president speaking. Central, I, Central Kenya think, leaders speaking after the president has directed them not to on the subject. That shows their respect for the president. How much respect they have for Banawuru Kenyatta. So, as we bring this to a close, the presidential elections in Kenya continue to be very antagonistic. And they will continue if things and continue yet, being how they are. And yet, devolution was said, was meant to cure such things of power is closer to the people so we don't all feel like we need our own at the center because then you have in whatever county there's a governor who's you know the boss in that you town so how do we yeah of course it requires to be amended every now and then depending on how we are moving mm -hmm. but people want to amend it to suit themselves how many people are evaluating how good this devolution is I mean, the constitution is, in as far as devolution is concerned. How do we make sure that the whole country has water connectivity? What are the issues that uh, um, make it very difficult for every other person to get water? Water is a constitutional right. As a matter of fact, members of public who are not getting water, they should sue government. Mm. Yes, it's a constitutional right to give water. What is it that the whole country can do legally in amending the Constitution to make it easy 
to govern. So what to will... make it easy to get Wajiko yeah. to have a better life. So what will cure that nature of our presidential well, elections? Lack of, uh, political petty wars, uh, uh, lack of push and pull between the national and county government, sitting together and agreeing like we did in the beginning of 2013 and implement those decisions. But you will see right now, uh, people will be saying, we want to change Katiba so that we can have prime minister, we can have this. Why do they need those things? But those who are saying they want to do that now, last time they were saying other things. Those who are opposing uh, uh, change of constitution to create this position uh, uh, now are the ones who are proposing them earlier. Mm. So it depends on where you sit, the need for the constitution. It is not for Kenya, it is for these people. But a time will come, let mm. me tell you, mm. when things will work. I have a lot of hope. That's good. I have a lot of hope. On a scale we of just need a few serious people. People. Just a few serious people. On a scale of 1 to 10, how is devolution doing five years on? Ah, I will give it a tentative four and a half. Tentative four and a half. If you ask me how Kambu is, I would have said 5.8 or 6. But we were committed. We had trophies of revenue, trophies of all inclusiveness, trophies of best uh, run government. Uh, uh, we did things under very extraneous circumstances. Mm. And we managed. So really, uh, those who are there now, the second term uh, um, governors, should not be worrying very much about forming government. Uh, you know, it's like President Kenyatta came in when President Kebake had already left, you know, a functional government. Um, we came in into government, there was nothing. It was just me and my deputy governor. That's where we started. Right. So right now there are systems and it should be fairly easy. Um, but some of the things you hear, oh. Some like what? of the things you hear. Like what? Like how do you just start giving people money? That you're, 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 you know, I, I ran away from speaking about Kiambu. But uh, misplaced priorities or not only that, a lack of an understanding not, of the issues uh, and how to That be... is a bit of it. Yeah. Because surely uh, you collect guys from the village and give them work, manual work. And then work that has other people being paid for. Then you pay them wages and they go drinking. So have you sorted out the problem? You have improved the problem, as in making the problem bigger. Because now you have able people with 400 bob drinking. That's their style. I, I would never do it that way. I would rather create a fund that buys you a picky picky, and you employ your brother. You do shifts, and you collect 400 bob per day, each of you, and you pay for your picky picky. Mm. The next time you want, you want a tuku tuku. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At least help them become something, not just become laborers. It's not but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in any way mm. um, speaking or spatting anyone. I, I, I wish Governor Waititu well. I hope he makes it. But by the look of things, things are tough. Do you... It's not over for you in politics, finally, is it's it? It's never over in politics. Once yeah. you're in, you're in you're forever. In. So we could be seeing you, deputy president, governor. Anything, you never know. Or okay. Omutata, a guy who just goes to court <laughs> and, deals, and deals with government. When, you should when, start going uh, over Kiambu really. County. I would you care rather, about the people rather, of Kiambu, don't you? I would you? rather give my help, mm -hmm. um, which I do yeah. to some of these governors. I, I really participate in, uh, uh, I don't want to mention the counties, but I think ab about seven counties okay. have consulted me on those things that we did so well. Mm -hmm. uh, needless to say, you will see some of my ministers, uh, ministers in other counties. They were quickly picked. My minister for health was in Nakuru, and now he's the new CEO, Kemsa. Mm. Why? All right. He was a good choice. We landed there. My minister there. of finance is in Kitui mm -hmm. as the minister of finance. I don't know the other one for trade uh, in another county. 
My chief okay. officers are spread in the whole country. Um, we, we were good. We, were, we had a good team. You had a good team. Thank you. Thank you so Asante. much for your time. Asante. It has been a pleasure. Asante. We wish you the best. Thank you. And we wait to see what your next mm. role yes. in public but, service is. But one thing we didn't talk about, yes. and probably it's by design. Right. There is this thing of uh, Kwajibika. Mm -hmm. You know Kwajibika? Mm -hmm. uh, lifestyle audit is about Kwajibika. Okay. People have given you resources. They are in your hands as governor. Then all of a sudden you become rich. Mm -hmm. They are in your hands as a minister of national government. And we know you are staying somewhere in Parklands. And all of a sudden, you are in Muthaiga, in a 400 million house, and you are a simple PS whose salary is known. Then you are shouting at the top of your voice. You, you do not support. It is not supported by law. My friend, what are you talking about? Right. Why isn't it supported by law? It is. But you just want to tell people, because you are a lawyer, people should read what you are saying as biblical truth. There is a requirement in the Ethics Act, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That we give a form that indicates declaration of our wealth. It is not for fun. Right. It is for it to be used as a base to check you. Lifestyle is one of those things. Right. Why are you running away if you have nothing to hide? Why are you telling cops, hey, don't come? My house has no, there's no theft. <laughs> sour, come. sour. Thank you. You Thank know what you. I'm saying? Yeah. But yet we come to your house and on the table there are gold bullions on the table. But you want to tell us that uh, you're a very hardworking man. Lifestyle audit. Iendele. Iendele. Yes. Good way to wrap it up. Thank you. Kinyata Mweshmiwa Raisi amesema, waanze na yeye. Mimi, I'm not a public servant right now. Yeah. I have no worries at all. If anyone wants to come and audit me, sour, sour. where I sit here, where we are today, it is not during, In beautiful home. It is not during uh, uh, my uh, gubernatorial work that I had this home. I was here since 2011. Okay. So really, if there is something I have done that indicates I ripped or I, you know, I, I stole money from Kambu, mm -hmm. they should come for me. Thank you. We must wind it up there. Asante Sana. Asante Sana. Thank we you. We appreciate your time. God bless you. Asante.